Good morning, Modern Steaders. You're not gonna believe this. If you watched yesterday's video, you might. Ah, what is that? Guys. Ah. Not what we look forward to get this time of the year. Two inches of fresh snow. Tanner loves the snow. He's crazy. You're crazy, Tanner. Do you like it? No. <laughs> the sky looks pretty. Yeah. Here. This guy loves the snow. Oh. <laughs> All that dog knows is snow. And he loves it when we get fresh snow. All right, we keep having one bird that flies up every time we open the door. Let's see. What are you? See, look at that. Get in there. You're crazy. Oh, every morning, you do that, honey. It's like she's a cage fighter. Every morning, she's been doing that. I hear the ducks splashing in the water. Come on. Come on, let's go. Uh, it wasn't supposed to snow, it was supposed to rain. And we were gonna try out the gutter system on the pasture pig mobile. <sighs> oh, it's 28 degrees out right now, guys. Talk about a muddy mess. These girls gonna be nice to hope. Come on out. Come on, let's go get some hay. What do you think of that snow and mud, huh? Be nice. I'm gonna leave the camera out and do a time lapse while I'm in the barn, taking care of all the other chores in there. I'll see all the goats treat, I hope. Want some chaff hay? We got the good stuff. Come on. Want some good stuff? Go ahead, look. This is your chaff hay. Is that good? Yeah, that's what you were looking for, huh? All right, we'll be back in a little bit. Check on you. You did good standing up to the bullies. A little bit at a time. You staying in there, you coming out. That's one thing I've learned with farming is nature can be rough. Whether it's pecking orders with chickens and goats and the weather. <sighs> Sounds like the plow trucks are out this morning. Must be sand in the road. Do you decide to come back? I 
I wonder what the chickens of New York City are gonna think of the snow. If they'll come out or if they'll be like, yeah, no, we're staying in the coop this morning. What do you ladies think, huh? You wanna come out? They're like, no thanks. You want me to feed you inside today? I see you made short work of that cabbage. There's nothing left. It's all gone. Two eggs. I don't blame the chickens from New York City not going outside this morning. I think Pluto's lost this morning. You looking for Figaro? He didn't come out, did he? He stayed in the house. Huh? We've cleaned our chimney multiple times throughout this burning season. But when it starts getting late in the season again like this, I like to just check it, even though we just cleaned it about a month ago. When we're burning fires right now, they're not always super hot because we don't need a, a lot of heat all the time. So I just wanna pull this out first. Let me go get my, yeah, hold on. I feel like if I don't put our tarp down first, I'm gonna regret it, so. Let's get this laid out first. Now, we can pull the plug. There we go. Yep. That's what the inside of a dirty metal bestest chimney looks like. Most of our creosote settles right here on the very bottom. There we go. Let me go get the brush and we'll get this taken care of. I'll be right back after I get done cleaning the chimney. When I went and picked up our grain the other day at our local feed store, they told me our meat bird chick order should be in tomorrow. I planned on using our pasture pig mobile as our brooder this spring, but the way our spring's been going, it's gonna be too cold for the next week, if not two weeks, to have our baby chicks outside in the pasture pig mobile. We're gonna set up our indoor chick brooder. It's really quick and easy to set it up made out of plywood. Let's see. You don't have to line it with a tarp, we're doing that just so it's easier to clean up and don't have to worry about our concrete floor in the basement getting stained. I'm gonna put some wood shavings down, but we'll get those when we pick the chicks up. We call this our Figaro-proof chick brooder. We know Figaro is gonna be getting up there daydreaming of eating some chicks. We made this chick brooder last year using a sheet of plywood, a couple of pieces of one by four pieces of pine, and a roll of hardware cloth. I'll put a link right here to the video of us making it, and I'll have a link in the description down below to our website that has all the directions to make one of these. We use this new style brooder light from coopsandmore.com. I'll have a link in the description down below, and if you use promo code LUMNA, you'll get 10% off your order. But one of the things I really like about this light, it's got an on off switch which makes it very convenient. We don't have to unplug it when we're done using it. Now when we 
get the phone call saying the chicks are ready to pick up, the brood is all set up, we'll just have to grab a few more supplies and we'll set their water and their feeder up when we get them. We have duplex nails on each side and the back. This way it can't get slid in around and the top is held in place. I know, I wish we didn't have to run the wood stove either. Couldn't winter just be over with? Luckily we got a whole bunch of pine scraps left over from when we built the house four years ago. Oh. I had to laugh though when I brought the wood in and I was, I don't want to say sorting it, but I was putting it away inside. Looking at some of these pieces, like this piece right here, it's a piece of our cam rack flooring and I can tell I cut it out with my jigsaw. I'm like, I know what that's from. I cut that out to put the floor vents in so the heat will rise upstairs. Uh, it's kind of funny that every piece of wood that I've been burning, I remember the story to it from four years ago. You're dressed like it's winter out again. Did winter come back? Yeah. Oh man. You don't like it? No, I have a feeling it's gonna be another one of those years where we have no spring and it's just gonna go straight to summer. Straight to summer. Yeah, oh, you don't even have any mud to play with. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I do. You'll have to fix your stream tomorrow. Yeah, it doesn't need it. Oh, I can still see it though. Can I pour their water? Yep, you wanna pour their water in? Yeah. Willow has been drinking a lot lately. Yep, fill it right up. It might not take it all, but as much as that'll fit. We'll be right there, Hope. Perfect. You wanna go out play for a little bit, Hope? Come on, let's go out. I know they're mean, but we gotta get you accustomed to them. You don't even wanna come out? Come on, Hope. Hope's like, I don't even, come on. You wanna come out? You wanna come out and play? You coming? Come on. No? All right. Is this what you want? You don't wanna see the girls? You just wanna have some time wanting to come in here, Libby's. Hope don't wanna go out there. What are you doing? What are you doing, huh? Uh, how's your skin looking? You're looking good. You got a nice little chubby belly. Guess what, Hope? It's supposed to be warm this weekend. That means your sweatshirt can come off. Yes. It means your sweatshirt's going to come off. And we're going to wash it. And we'll let you play. We'll let you play. Yes, you can play. You can play till your heart is content. Everybody keeps asking what chaffe is. I'll give some to Hope and I'll show you. So chaffe is shredded up and fermented alfalfa hay. I'm pretty sure the name brand of it is chaff hay and it's from Texas. I've never seen any other brand. These girls might be jealous because they don't get any chaff hay right now. Buttercup and Blossom put on some really good winter weight. So I don't want to give them chaff hay. I want to just feed them regular hay and regular alfalfa pellets for now because I want them to lose a few pounds. And then Willow, I've been giving her some grain because she's pregnant. We're going to be having our vet come out and doing our yearly vet check on our goats. And if everything goes right, we're going to have them ultrasound Willow as long as they can if our coat's not too thick. Yay! That'll be exciting, huh? Yeah. yeah. Waiting for Pluto. Yeah, I know. Move your butt. Pluto, be nice. 
Guide, get in. I'm gonna lock you girls in. That's right. I don't forget to do it later. It's not very nice out. They won't be coming out much more anyways today. Thank you for your eggs. Look at all them beautiful eggs. You coming? Keeps getting colder and colder out. Every time you see me, I got more clothes on. <laughs> I just had to bring in an armful of firewood for tonight. You're always at the door, lady. You're always there waiting for us. Wonder if we got any more small eggs today. Nope, but she just laid one. Can you tell how wet it is? Yeah. She says, hey, give me some privacy. That's a fresh laid egg. You can actually watch the egg dry. That's the membrane that everybody talks about that a chicken puts on when they lay an egg. They come out, it comes out wet. And as it comes out, they put some kind of membrane on it. So that egg is nice and clean and not, it's sealed. Nothing can get in the egg. That's pretty cool we got to see that dry like that. One of the nice things about cooking up big meals is you have leftovers and you can make up other dishes fairly quick, I, I'll say. But we have leftover pork, so I'm gonna use the pork and make like an Asian sticky pork recipe. So it starts with brown sugar. I do a little splash of sesame oil just for the extra flavoring. We're gonna need soy sauce. So it's a third of a cup soy sauce, three quarters of a cup brown sugar, a splash of sesame oil, two tablespoons hoosin sauce. I'm just going off my memory here. It's gonna be delicious. And do a splash of lemon juice. Two splashes. I'm gonna mince up one large clove of garlic. Put as much garlic in as you'd like, is my rule of thumb. So we got a big one and a little one that came in that bulb, that clove. Gotta put it on low heat, nice and nice. Out of our leftover pork roast that we cooked up the other night. I'm gonna cut it up into bite-sized slices. Now we can add the pork right in.
I have never seen the egg bloom on the egg dry before. The closest I've seen is feeling the egg a little wet. But that was, thought that was pretty nice to be able to see it today for the first time wet and dry. I put it in fast forward for you guys, but it honestly only took I think 15 or 20 seconds standing there to see it dry. So that was pretty wild. So that bloom goes on there and when it dries it just seals off the egg. So nothing can get in there. So when you, if you wash an egg, you rinse off all of that bloom. And that's why they say if you wash your eggs, you should refrigerate them. In a lot of countries, I believe it's over in Europe. If we have any European viewers, leave it in the comments down below. But I don't think they can wash their eggs because of that reason. Their eggs aren't at the grocery store, aren't in the refrigerated aisle. They're left out on the shelves. So they can't wash the eggs for sale. They have to stay fresh have a fresh bloom on them. So it's pretty interesting to be able to see that. Learned something new today, which is awesome. Thanks for coming along on our journey with us, guys. Spring is going to be here anytime now, even though we got two fresh inches of snow. Uh, the meat birds should be here hopefully tomorrow, as long as everything goes as planned. So that's exciting. Our piglets will be coming soon. Willows due May 12th. The vet should be coming in the next day or two so hopefully we can get the ultrasound done a great time of the year so much fun stuff going on thanks for coming along on our journey list guys and we'll see you right back here at the next video at lumna acres a guide to modern homesteading self-sufficiency and freedom <laughs>